shall we play a game? Why, yes. I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Live from Little Rock, it's Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. We're actually live today from show sponsor Game Goblins, and I've got uh, the crew of Little Rock Games with me, and we're going to be talking to them uh, here in a moment uh, or a few minutes about what they do. Obviously, they're in Little Rock, and they make games, La Petite Roche, and uh, they're also uh, got a very cool game out right now that they're kickstarting called Galactic Scoundrels. Everybody loves the scoundrels, so we're going to be talking to them here in a moment. First, let me uh, kind of get things kicking along here. This is live Geek Talk Radio. So uh, if you're listening at 1 p.m. Central on June 30th at 1 o'clock on 101.1 FM in the uh, Little Rock area, or if you're listening online anywhere in the world uh, via 101.1 FM, theanswer.com. Just glad to have you. And, of course, if you're listening by podcast or on Krypton Radio or on YouTube or any of those ways, I'm just glad to have you. This is both a live show and a podcast because I love both uh, mediums. And I believe that my guests today have a podcast of their own. So uh, hopefully they'll promote that. But this is Live Talk Radio. One of the reasons I do it is I like it to be interactive. So if anybody out there uh, would like to call in, you can call in at 501-823-0965. That's 501-823-0965. Or you can tweet me at Shane Plays. That's S H A N E. P-L-A-Y-S. All right, so before we get to any further show notes or anything like that, uh, I'm going to introduce, we've got, this is a five-person crew at Little Rock Games. We have three of them on right now. Later in the show, two more will be tagging in. But right now, we have Joe and Tanner and Olivia. So we're going to say hi to them real quick and and break the ice, and, uh, and then we'll keep going with some show notes and then get deeper into the meat of the show. So, uh, if I understand right, Joe, are, are you the sort of benevolent dictator here, or what, what, what's going on? Is there is the, is that how the, I mean? Is it? I guess that's true. Um, yep. I mean, the, the Little Rock Games as a whole is a kind of uh, partnership, so all five of us are are equals. Good. I'm I'm okay. the lead uh, designer for Galactic Scoundrels, so I kind of took the lead on creating the idea and on uh, bringing it to life. But then these guys all came in and made it the kind of fantastic game that it is now. But great, okay, yeah. All right, so uh, all right, so that's Joe. Uh, and Joe, I, I have an icebreaker question that sure. I like to do with people. If you could instantly learn any skill, what would it be? Ooh, I would like to know how to uh, speak South Korean or Korean in general. Korean I guess. in general. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, any specific reason? Yeah. So my kids love K-pop. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I listen to it 19 hours a day now in my house. Fine. And I would love to actually know what what, is what's being, being said. said. So. Okay. All right. So, to, for a closer K pop connection with your kids, say that three times quick. You yeah, would like right. It. You would instantly. Okay. So, uh, Tanner, I'll get to you here in a second. Olivia, if you could learn any skill in, in, in an instant, what would it be? My answer was going to be to learn another language, but now I don't know. <laughs> Uh, probably now after doing the first steps of this Kickstarter, it'd be marketing skills because <laughs> that's something that's been a very slow process and it sucks when you don't know how to do it. It so. is so hard. Yeah, oh marketing, my gosh. marketing is hard. Yeah. To get above the, you think it's easy watching everybody else market, yep. but no. then you try to do it and to actually break through the noise is, is harder than a lot of people think. And then finally, Tanner. Nope. What's your favorite breakfast cereal? <laughs> See? <laughs> Just, <yeah. laughs> <Yep>. Okay, so favorite breakfast cereal. I don't know. That's, uh, man, Can I guess Cinnamon Toast your... Crunch is, that's is a good pretty one. good. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll let you answer the, 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 the profound <laughs> one, too. If you, could, if you could do any skill, what would it be? Oh, I'd love to learn how to fly. I've always had sort of a phobia of heights, so uh, having control over that in some aspect would be pretty exciting. So. That would also, in uh, a lot of people don't know, my main degree is in social psychology. That would also be a form of exposure therapy where you would be oh, exposing yourself. Nice. To, it'd See. be radical exposure therapy. <laughs> but anyway, all right. And then I've got to, uh, I got to, I got to wrap uh, poetic with, uh, or ra- wax poetic with my, my engineer. Zach, how are you doing, man? I'm doing good. You doing good? Mm-hmm. Say hi to everybody. Hello. Good evening. Good afternoon. Hello, this, this is my engineer, Zach. Uh, and for people that don't know, the head of my news team, Sal. His grandmother and her dog, Muffin. If I don't banter with Zach at least once during the show, I get it. I get 
I get nasty emails, tweets, phone calls, <laughs> whatever, postcards. Now, last week we got kind of a nice postcard, but they were just expressing sympathy to me. Uh, but I didn't hear anything this week, Zach, because last week we, you and I basically – and we don't always we bantered like the whole show. Yes, we did. So, so they got a they got they had an overwhelming abundance of banter. <laughs> so maybe maybe just not hearing from them is good. I don't know. So, uh, but I did want to ask you, Zach. I, I sent you. I think I tweeted to you the thumbnail image I used for last week's show. Yes. Did Did you see that? Yes, I did. You texted. What did it to you me. think of that? I remember it was from the picture we took last year. Yeah, but yeah. it was yeah, it was you. You mm-hmm. you were featured. Yes, Zach, the man, the man himself. All right. Mm-hmm. So, how did did you like that? I thought it might be a nice surprise for you. Yes, I did. You did? Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, did you have you seen any movies between last week and now? Uh, I'm probably gonna see a movie next week. Okay. So mm-hmm. you still haven't seen Jurassic World, Never mind. Fallen Kingdom, or whatever? I did see that on Tuesday. I forgot. Yes, you I did. did. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you didn't like the first Jurassic World. So, what did you think of Fallen Kingdom? This one was fun. It was, it was fun. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was. Okay, all right. So, uh, any any specific thing about it you liked that would not be a spoiler to somebody? Uh, not really. To tell you the truth, no. I think it's just a movie you can. Go I've got watch an idea. Enjoy. I don't know if this is a spoiler or not, but are there dinosaurs? <laughs> <laughs> if he says no, it's a spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> and and does anybody during the movie count teeth? I'm not going to say anything. You're not going to say anything. <laughs> all right. All right, I love it. I loved it in Jurassic World when they counted teeth and unleashed the Tyrannosaurus Rex on the Indominus Rex because the T Rex don't play. <laughs> All right, Zach, man, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for uh, you know handling the remote stuff there, folks. Again, we are at Game Goblins right now today. Uh, if we're if you're listening live, June thirtieth. You know, and if you've never been to Game Goblins, uh, come on in, check them out. If they're ba- they're at I almost want to say. Uh, Bamus and West Conus. So they're, they're Canis and West Bowman right by, uh, let's see, you've got uh, Subway, you've got uh, uh, Tropical Smoothie, Sp- Tropical Smoothie, and then uh, Senior Tequila. So that, that's the little shopping center they're in. If you haven't been here in a while or if you've never been in, come on in. I'll actually be here a good part of the afternoon. I'm running a game called Dust City Outlaws at 3 o'clock. I'm here today because I was supposed to do a live show on Free RPG Day. And, and I had family issues come up, and I was also supposed to run that game, and so I've rescheduled till today. So come on in, folks, and say hi. Uh, I don't bite. I can't guarantee that Little Rock Games doesn't bite, but, <laughs> but I don't bite, uh, as long as you're not talking about the quality of my show. And uh, so just come on in, and if you're a first-time customer, mention Shane Plays and get $10 off your purchase of fifty dollars or more, and tell them Shane Place sends you. Remember, that's got to be you got to be a first time customer to get to get that sweet sweet action. All right, so guys, check this out. This should uh, make y'all happy, uh, both the listeners at home and the folks here at the table. This kind of shows you how much larger the the gaming world keeps getting. Okay, there's no doubt that it, but in tabletop games and in role playing games, we're in a major renaissance right now. Huge, right? So check this out. Uh, a, a guy who used to play in my D&D group asked me if I would share this out, and I said sure because he works here now. But on July 3rd, 10th, 17th, 24th, and 31st, so every Tuesday? Is that all? Is that? Yep. Yeah, every Tuesday in July, basically. The movie tavern in Little Rock is having D&D nights. That's kind of neat. Wow, yeah. Yeah, so it just kind of shows you – you know, the reach that uh, D&D keeps getting and, and games in general. Uh, a lot of people say D&D like, you know, we say Coke in the South. <laughs> yep. What do you want? I want a Coke. What kind of Coke? A Pepsi, <laughs> right? So uh, DMs will host from 7 to 9. It says BYOD. I guess that's bring, bring your own dice and a hearty thirst. There will be signature drinks. Uh, the Nat 20. I guess they've come up with a drink called the Nat 20 for those of age. And the Nat, uh, the Nat 20 in general, and for those of age than at 21. The dice may <laughs> fail you, but this drink won't. All participants must be 18 plus and will have the opportunity to win our grand prize for the MVP. They don't say what the grand prize is. I bet you, I'm going to guess it's like free dinner in a movie. I, if I had to guess, yeah. right? <laughs> if I had to get crazy, um, all players are invited to come early to create a character or can choose from our pre- pre-made selections. So that's every Tuesday evening, 7 to 9, at the movie tavern, 
in Little Rock, which I haven't mentioned yet. Have y'all been in the movie tavern yet? No, yeah. I just learned about it yesterday. Yeah, uh, I've got a friend who's been there a couple of times, and I haven't been. So, and I've never been to any of the like, uh, I don't know what is it, the Alamo Draft, Draft House, House yeah. and, and yep. the, you know the, this thing, you know that this kind of news, you know, come have dinner and watch a movie, you know. And it. now I've been to places. Uh, there was a place in Biloxi, Mississippi, in the '90s called the Silver Screen, but they did. Uh, like dollar movies, and then like they would microwave you a pizza and bring it to you. So it wasn't exactly <laughs> nice. the same thing. The cool thing about that place was that you could rent it out and like play Nintendo games on the uh, oh on the, on big the screen. screen and have like nice. parties there yeah. and play Nintendo on the big screen. So yeah, that was pretty neat. So also want to let people know, Shane Play sponsor Arkansas RPG Con twenty eighteen badge sales are now open. Vendor and sponsorship. Options are also open. Go on over to ARPGCon.com for more info and make sure to follow Arkansas RPG Con on Facebook. This is the second annual Arkansas RPG Con. The first one did quite well, uh, and they're already the second one, they've already had to move it to Maumel uh, because of, how, of the response they had last year uh, at, the, at the venue we used in Benton. I can't remember the name of the, the venue. Also, uh, today is the last day. I know some people will listen to the show by... Uh, Kickstarter, or no, by Kickstarter, by <laughs> podcast or on Krypton Radio. But if you're listening live on June 30th, uh, today is the last day for the Wild Stars 35th anniversary Time Warmageddon Kickstarter. And that's by uh, Michael Tierney uh, through, Servo- I think you say Servosa, Kursova. I'm, I'm not sure. It's a, it's a really cool magazine out there. I've actually been talking to the guy about having them on. Uh, but that ends today. And Michael, of course, is a sponsor of the show through uh, Collector's Edition and the comic book store. So, all right. Last thing, and then we'll get to a break. And when we get back from the break, we're going to talk about Little Rock Games. And we're going to talk about um, uh, the Galactic Scoundrels, where you basically you take Han Solo, you take Malcolm Reynolds, and uh, some other scoundrel. Insert scoundrel here. Smash them together. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's me. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. Am I a scoundrel? Am I cool enough to be a scoundrel? I don't. I don't think I qualify. <laughs> I, I, I'm just probably more of a uh, of a cannon fodder thug that's in the scoundrels gang, <laughs> right? So, anyway, all right. So, um, but yeah, the last thing I want to talk about today, and this is kind of a sad thing, but I do like to take the show and and uh, and and you know highlight trip, make tributes to certain people. Uh, Harlan Ellison has passed yeah. away. I, well, speaking of, hold on a second. Speaking of Arkansas RPG Con, there's Carl Heil right there. What's up, <laughs> Carl? Um, here, real quick, lean in and, and give a, I'm not trying to make out with you. It's just for the mic. Give, give a quick shout out for Arkansas RPG Con. Arkansas RPG Con is August 11th, a convention for all kinds of tabletop role playing games. We're going to have old school D&D, new school D&D, middle school D&D, mid school, mid school, um, and other games, uh, Starfinder, Pathfinder, all kinds of games. All right, cool. August, August Saturday, August 11th at the Mall Mill Event Center, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., ARPGCon.com. Okay, cool. Thanks, Carl. So, um, yeah, well, Har- Harlan Ellison has passed away. Uh, most people know Harlan if they know of him at all these days as he wrote the original City on the Edge of Forever, which has been considered the best episode of Star Trek ever. Yep. Uh, there was a lot of controversy and drama behind the scenes with that. There's an excellent... Uh, book out there uh, they they call it like city on the edge of forever the the original teleplay and it has multiple versions as it kept going through the revision process and it has this long like rant from harlan where he finally got it all off his chest everything that happened and you know calling he, he's one of the few people in the trek universe that would stand up to gene roddenberry when roddenberry was in his prime uh, and so it's just a really interesting read but but harlan ellison uh you know he was he he, he wrote a kind of science fiction that, that had a huge impact on the genre. Uh, you know, he, he wrote uh, TV scripts. He wrote movie scripts. A lot of people are like, oh, Star Trek never wanted to do anything with him again. They brought him to consult on other episodes. He consulted on the motion picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he basically said, you guys are just doing the changeling here again. Was it, which, not the change, which one was it where in the original series they brought the probe on board? Yeah. The changeling? Yeah, yeah he's, like, you guys, right. he's like, you guys are just doing the changeling yeah. again. So, anyway. Uh, the point is, you know, he did a lot. He, he wrote probably uh, the best title for anything I've ever heard in my entire life, which is the uh, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. You know, he was just, and, and he would, uh, 
I, I, I don't know. He was, he was, he would charge for interviews. You know, he, like I said, he was, he was both like the most amazing guy out there and his own worst enemy. Uh, but, but Warren Ellis, who's a comic book writer asked him, said, uh, you know, think of all the great stuff, uh, that, that you could have wrote if you didn't spend all that time fighting with people in pointless arguments. <laughs> and Harlan was like, you can't let the bleepy to bleeps win. So that he's like, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to fight him. He was just, you know, he's, uh, he's like, he never met a fight he didn't like, I guess. Uh, you know, and, and he, he said, you know, I never, I never, uh, was a, was a blank hole to anybody that wasn't a blank hole. So he was just, you know, some people thought he was the biggest jerk in the world. Somebody, some people thought he was the most amazing thing. He, uh, he was a magnificent mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you read, you know, his original, uh, scripts for City on the Edge of Forever, I agree. It was, it was actually a better uh, a better script. The only thing that that I disagree with him, he didn't have bones in the original script. Right. But other than that, I, I do think that, that his stuff was superior. So, uh, you know, and, I, and with the limited time I have, I, I can't really do justice to the man. But he was he was a singular personality, a magnificent writer. Uh, did you know? And and was not afraid to be an iconoclast, even to his own detriment. So, uh, you know, I, I salute you. Harlan Ellison, did, and if you if y'all want to share, I ahead. just wanted to add that. Um, so Will Wheaton tweeted tweeted out about him and actually pointed out that he had always, he was always super kind to him. Yep. And so it's it's as you're talking about the sort of many faces right. that he had. Um, it seems like he you know he had a real kindness in him that yeah. didn't always show, but right. was certainly remembered by people who knew him well. I have a feeling I never met him, but I have a feeling. The face you saw of Harlan reacted to the face you showed him would be my yeah that you know, sounds right would be my only my only you know thing but yeah if if you don't know Harlan Ellison this is a perfect time to go you know learn about him but yeah he was born uh, May twenty seventh uh, nineteen thirty four according to Wikipedia I thought I saw a different birth date on another site and then uh, he died June twenty eighth twenty eighteen at the age of eighty four in Los Angeles California so uh, like I said I. I barely even scratched the surface of, of what he what he did. He wrote thousands of short stories and things. So anybody else? You don't have to. I'm just opening it up. Anybody else wants to share them? Okay. So what I and and they say that uh, silence in radio is a no no, but it's my show. So when um, when somebody passes away like this, I want to highlight. We'll just do a moment of silence for uh, for Harlan Ellison there. So hey, and Zach, could you? I don't know if you can mute. Because I know there's a lot of background noise. Maybe if you could mute it for a second. All right, and that was a moment of silence for Harlan Ellison, uh, a singular personality. So, um, if, you, if you're not familiar with his work, folks, go check it out. All right, we are going to uh, take a break right here on Shane Plays Geek Talk. When we come back, we're going to be talking with the folks from Little Rock Games. Not only about Little Rock Games, but about uh, their game uh, that, you know, they say they're Kickstartering it, but, uh, but I can tell it's, it's complete. <laughs> I mean, it's ready to go. I guess they just need the Kickstarter money to print it and get it out there and maybe, maybe produce some more material for it because it's, it's already smooth and polished. So we will be back here in a moment on Shane Plays Geek Talk. <laughs> Comic book lovers, visit the wildstars.com today. From the mind of author and comic book industry expert Michael Tierney, it's not just a comic book, it's a comic book novel. The Wild Stars is sci fi and so much more. Learn the explanations behind UFOs and space gods. This isn't the Twilight Zone, this is the region of the Milky Way galaxy known as the Wild Stars. We guarantee you've never read anything like it. The complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell, with one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time, from small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. The Die is Cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure where dragons lie and the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. 
where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today shame plays radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much however did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as one dollar an episode simply go to patreon.com slash shame plays hey welcome back to shame plays geek talk a journey into the things we love, I'm your host, Shane Stacks. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in, uh, whether it's by live show or podcast or whatever. And we're joined, as I said earlier, uh, first of all, we're live from show sponsor Game Goblins in West Little Rock, uh, right at Bowman and, and Canis, uh, right by uh, Tropical Smoothie and Subway and Senior Tequila uh, and, all, and all those. And I think there's a ATA martial arts place right next door too so you probably know where i'm talking about come on in if you haven't been in the game goblins in a while come on in say hi uh to the staff or me and 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 look around great selection of products here uh for a, a wide variety of games not just like hardcore you know uh type games you got to spend hours to to learn how to open up the first dice to to you could start playing in two minutes with your family and role-playing games war games, card games, and there's all kinds of uh, play space and tournaments. So come on in. And if you do come in, make sure if you're a first-time customer, uh, mention Shane Plays and you'll get $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. Tell them Shane Plays sent you. Okay, so got the uh, crew of Little Rock Games here, which, uh, as, as you may have deduced, uh, is, is a game company right here in Little Rock. So, um, <laughs> And if that wasn't the case, then I'm sure there'd be... A story behind it, uh, and they're they're go to their website. Uh, what's 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 your y'all's website, guys? Uh, it's uh, LittleRockGames.com. Okay, so LittleRockGames.com, and you got a Facebook, you got a Twitter. Go check all that out. Uh, they they've already got some games under their belt. Uh, they're currently kickstarting. It's not just a card game. It's played with cards, but there's dice and there's RPG elements and or it's sort of narrative elements uh, that like you're role playing. Uh, it, where you're basically, you know, a scoundrel in space pulling jobs of, of, uh, of various uh, moral uh, questionability, <laughs> I suppose. Here's the, I think I got this off the Kickstarter website. Galactic Scoundrels is a game for people who love Firefly, Star Wars, Star Trek, Valerian, space western comics from the 50s, the RPG Traveler, uh, is the spin word marches in this game anywhere? Is the no no, no spin word marches? Yes. Okay, yeah, Not, that's, that's probably that's protected the IP. A. Yeah, there's probably protected IP. Yeah, Blade Runner, Alien, Rick and Morty, Cowboy Bebop, Heavy Metal, the film, The Fifth Element, and any number of sci-fi stories about morally questionable protagonists. You know when the um, when Elon Musk launched his roadster into space. I was like, congrats, Heavy Metal did it in the 80s, right? <laughs> so, anyway. That yeah, is so, correct. Yeah. No, it's, still, it's still pretty cool what they're doing over yeah, there at, at SpaceX. So, all right, guys. So, um, and I'm, I'm just going to pick on people uh, since there's three of you. Some people will just say there. I'm going to wait for the other person to go. Uh, Tanner, tell me about Little Rock Games. So, Little Rock Games, uh, we started it last fall. Um, and the five of us have been working together for a long time, sort of casually. Uh, we had all these sort of pet projects going, um, and we decided to sort of band together and help help make those projects a reality and make new projects, too. So, so did you meet, like, personally, like, at events at game stores, or was this all online or kind of a comment? How did you guys all come together? So and we gals? had a, a, a sort of regular game meetup group uh, okay. at Milo's Coffee here in Little Rock. Uh, so, you know, every two weeks, and this still goes on, um, we meet up, uh, we, we talk about, you know, ideas we have or play test each other's games or just general feedback. And so that sort of is how we all came together at first, and we just sort of grew out of that as we went. Cool. So who, um, out of all of you, there's five of you currently, correct? Who, yep. who, who seen, who's got the most experience? 
Wow. <laughs> in what, Shane? <laughs> I guess game design in general. Um, that's a hard question. Um, I've been teaching it for a while. Oddly enough, everyone else in the partnership was actually a student of mine at one time oh, over okay. at UA Little Rock. All right. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Um, which is, is weird because we don't think of that us each other that way anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, I mean, I started designing games in probably the early 90s. Does that beat you, Brad? Brad's not on the air yet, but yeah, Brad um, will be joining us soon. And I think the he's other he's pouting because I didn't give him his money at the end of the. Uh, <laughs> I got to do a quick demo. That's right. right. The show you did. And, uh, I was supposed to give him five thousand credits, and I said no. You skipped so out. I did. Yeah, I, I blew like a true morally questionable yes. scoundrel. Okay, he'll forget that next time we play. But yeah. No. Well, okay. <laughs> so and then we we also have. Uh, uh, Robbie will be joining us, too, after the next break, and he's here with his lovely daughter. Okay, so, Olivia, over to you. Tell me a little bit about Little Rock Games. So, yeah, like Tanner said, I mean, we've been making games together for a while um, because we all like the work that each other does and thought we wanted to support each other sure. in, uh, I guess, a business setting. Um, and, yeah, we do stuff. We do digital and tabletop games. Obviously, our first project, Galactic Scoundrels, is a tabletop game that we're kickstarting. But here soon, we're going to have a digital game that we announce. So that'll be our next project. And we're always uh, taking on new things because we love creating all sorts of interactive experiences. Great. Okay. So tell me a little bit about your digital games. Like how did, how most game companies, you all almost sound more like a cooperative. Maybe I'm not uh, getting no, that that's correctly. Right. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So you're more of a cooperative than a traditional uh, you know, incorporate a company, uh, even though you may be both. Most don't focus on digital and tabletop. So how, yeah. how, how's, like, how has that happened? Is it just because you have people from diverse backgrounds? We're, we're really, really bad at business, okay. <laughs> Shane. <Yeah. laughs> we're, we're great at game making, not so good at business. No, the truth is that we, we have ideas we want to make, and in the end, I think whether those ideas are super financially successful is less important to us as a as a group than whether we make the things we really want to make. Okay. And so those just cross the boundary between physical stuff and, and digital stuff. Um, and obviously both media do different things, right? right. So um, we want a lot of social interaction in a game like Galactic Scoundrels, but then there are games we want to distribute widely and give people a, a different kind of experience digitally. So Now, where, where are your... Uh I mean, obviously, people go to LittleRockGames.com, but, like, are you on Steam? Like, where are your digital products at? Yeah. So, Olivia, take that one. Yeah, well, uh, none of them are released yet. Actually, okay. this, uh, well, it's not officially announced yet, but I guess we can go ahead and talk about it. A scoop! <laughs> Sweet! <laughs> Sal from my news team will be so happy. <laughs> yeah, so we're, um, we're working on a game right now because mainly Tanner and I have been the leads on this project, and it's called To the Rescue, and it's a dog shelter simulator that we're making. Yeah, I saw you tweet about that. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, tweet about it a little bit. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, it, it's still really early, so, again, it's unreleased. But, but yeah, cool. that's what our next episode yeah. project is. Can I just – I'm going to add one little bit because yeah, this is the there, coolest yeah. thing about the game, which <laughs> is that um, part of Little Rock Games' mission as a group is that we are interested in creating games that have ideally some sort of social or artistic element, Okay. Um, which, again – tend to not always be financially successful. But sure. the cool social aspect to what, what Tanner and Olivia are doing is that um, To the Rescue is a game where you run a rescue and part of the way the mechanics and, and monetizing of it works is that you can actually donate to real shelters and real rescues as a way to make in-game things happen. That's really cool. Yeah. So, so, that, so it's like... Uh, so like in-app purchases, which would, in would actually help real. <laughs> right, exactly. Wow, that's great. Yeah, right? Yeah. And so they yeah. came up with that idea as they were forming the idea for the game, and we just thought this is such a cool is way a to create yeah. something that they care about, their dog lovers, but also then to bring something back to the community. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, so yeah I like that a lot. Yeah. Yep. yeah, no, I like that a lot. And I guess people could be confident that – like it's going right there and not, you know. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. Well, your donation <laughs> it will That's make right. it to to uh, fluffers, but eighty percent right. is going to go to our uh, CEO. So yeah, okay, we're, we're definitely going to be fully transparent about all that because part of the the sales of the game are going to go towards charity as that. well as a hundred percent of the microtransactions that we end up implementing. So that is, dare I say, groovy. So yeah. I, I really groovy. like that a lot. Yeah. It's acceptable. I I was gonna I was gonna pitch y'all game. Uh, but there's no social responsibility to it whatsoever. <laughs> so it was going to be called the Grognard's Tale. Uh, 
instead of the bard's tale. Uh-huh. And it was going to be a bunch of people like me that uh, are desperately clinging to our youth, uh, <laughs> going through oh the tropes of modern gaming and reacting in, in uh, <laughs> grumpy grognard fashion. So, yeah, but there's no socially redeeming. Uh, unless there's like a get off my lawn charity, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. So anyway, okay. So Maybe move. We could help grognards <laughs> down on their luck. You could. Yes. Uh, grog. Yeah. So okay. Anyway. Uh, so now, Joe, tell me uh, a little bit about Little Rock Games. Um. So uh, Little Rock Games is, uh, I think, kind of like we, what we said. There, there's five. Yeah. Of give us. me like what is it? I'm looking uh, what, for that. Oh, like what is it to you? To like, me? Yeah. Um. So imagine. You could spend tons of time with the four people you like the most in the world making cool stuff and constantly having your imagination sort of uh, spun up by their ideas. Okay. That's that great. is – yeah, I know. That's how I feel about us. I want to marry great. them. Wow. <laughs> All four of them. Right now on the air. <laughs> wow. Uh, I, you know, I don't have – the FCC does not give me – does not invest me with that power. Oh, no. But uh, that's, that's, a, that, that's great. Okay, so there is love and uh, design and, and all kinds of things going on at Little Rock Games. All right, so, uh, guys, we'll go to a break here in a couple of minutes, and we'll be bringing on uh, Brad and Robbie. So I want to give Olivia and Tanner a chance to talk a little bit about galactic scoundrels was which we're about to move into so uh eeny meeny miny mo olivia tell me a little bit about galactic scoundrels which is currently being kickstarted and you guys are already at like 75 percent of your goal after just mm-hmm. a few days you're gonna fund so right now it's like how far into possible stretch stretch goals uh are you know i i i, I stake what I, you're gonna fund i mean i don't see you not funding so anyway uh, having watched you know eight million kickstarters you you're, you're fine. So what? tell me about it. Tell me about it, Olivia. Well, first of all, that's super encouraging. Because so, yeah. there's always that little kernel of fear that's, right. that's there, like, what if, what if. So it's good to hear you say that. Um, but, yeah, Galactic Scoundrels is a game that we've been working on for a couple years off and on. I mean, it's been a project that's been swimming around uh, for a while. Um, and really what it is is it's a it's – a storytelling game because what we really wanted to do was sort of crystallize an RPG experience into a like a lighter game that people could play in like an hour or so um, and the setting is sort of space western like Shane already said um, where all, each player ha- is a captain of their own ship they've got their own crew they've got their traits that they can use to get through all these obstacles on the way to completing a job and and it's mainly cards. It's uh, over 200 cards in the game, 234. Four. Yeah, yep. I remember that. Plus more if we reach stretch goals. Yeah, so yeah. stretch goals For you now. have. There's uh, a whole additional set yeah. of content. But I want to be clear, there's a lot of playability with what's in here right now. They're not going to get some barely playable uh, you know, concept of a game. I mean, there's a full game here. Yeah, I mean, because we've been uh, we've play tested it a whole lot with a lot of different. I, I was of telling y'all before the show, yeah. people have told me how much play testing you put in on this. Yeah, we so. really have been trying to really engage with like local community. We've been here at Game Goblins a ton. They're probably super tired of us bringing <laughs> this game in here by now. Uh, but yeah, and we like to think that everybody we played with, or from all the feedback we've gotten, it's been a really great uh, experience. It's captured everything we wanted. So good. Well, it looks it looks fantastic. I mean, uh, we did about a fifteen minute demo. Uh, where basically you guys put on the cheat codes to let me win and <laughs> to show me various aspects of the game. Uh, and it looks completely, I mean, it, the, the materials feel good, the art's good. This isn't mock-up stuff. So uh, so I'm going to kick that over to uh, Brad at this point. Or not Brad, Tanner. I'm sorry, uh, Tanner. Um, how, how, do you, how do you produce something like that? Like, I would have no idea how to get materials looking this good. How, how did y'all do that? Right, so that's one of the, the really cool things that you touched on earlier, the sort of renaissance of tabletop gaming right now. Right. Um, there are several websites out there where you can sort of submit your, your content, and they'll print it out on pretty high-quality uh, products, which is great if you have an idea, you want to prototype it. Oh, um, so this is... That's a one-off printing? No, it's it's a short run. So, okay, so twelve saying. copies. And well, even for twelve copies, that yeah, wow, yeah. it yeah. was absurdly expensive. <laughs> was it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was like ninety dollars a copy. Was it really? Well, that's not bad for prototyping. Yeah, right? but that, that lets you yeah. get a polished. Yeah, product. I mean, it's a right. Oh, it's totally polished. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this box with these parts. Yeah, that is very polished. Um, okay. 
Well, is there uh, anything game-wise you would like? Olivia touched on the narrative RPG aspect. Is there anything ga- game-wise you would like to touch on? Yeah, so, so uh, broadly speaking about it, um, a lot of games, I feel like after i played them a couple times, I'm, I'm done with it, right? Like, I've, I've experienced most of what the game has to offer. But one of the things that's So it's like out- the person who sold me this game is a scoundrel. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm the kind of person who will watch a movie once every, like, five or ten years, yeah. and that's fine. Like, I okay, don't need to watch it every, right. every Okay, week. I got you. Uh, but I have not gotten tired of Galactic Scoundrels the probably 150 times I've played it over the last six months. Uh, and sort of the way the references to like old games like build up over mm-hmm. the over time as you play it more and more, mm-hmm. uh, that's something I really enjoy. Sort of okay. every experience improves the the, the forthcoming experiences. So. Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna get Joe's take on it after the break because if if I understand right, he's staying with us uh, after the break. Yep. My impression, uh, just a quick quick playthrough that I did on the demo and then looking at stuff online. Uh, What I want to get across to people is now, and this is going to make it sound like maybe it's overly complex. It's not. Uh, It's not just a card game, right? It's not just a card game. It uses cards, but it also uses dice. Uh, There's a gambling mechanic. Uh, You know, I mean, if you've always wanted to, you know, win the Millennium Falcon at you know, Sabic or whatever. I mean, it's, you know, it's not, but it's got that scoundrelly, you know, where, and, and that's the mechanic where you, uh, you can win jobs through gambling if, and that sort of thing. Uh, there's a lot of different character types, a lot of callbacks to science fiction and Westerns and space Westerns. Again, there's dice, uh, and, and there's cards that you can use as money. And, uh, and then as Olivia, it's interesting to me to watch group dynamics Olivia is all obviously one of your narrative people who really focuses on narrative because like everyone's like, okay, here's the rules. And Olivia's like, but you can also narrate it and go <laughs> on and tell a story. So, and then she brought that up again as like one of her main things. So, My English you know, degree showing through. yeah, so it all, it all kind of ties in, uh, you know, and it's, it's, so it's, it's, if you see pictures of it, you might think, oh, okay, that's a nice looking card game. There's more to it than that, that, uh, than just a card game and and it's got a lot of atmosphere right a game has to first and foremost you have to be able to take the atmosphere off of it and the game mechanics have to be fun uh but then when you put the atmosphere on it they have to enhance it somehow uh, aesthetically or whatever uh lore wise or something like that and you know and again you know uh, every, everybody is you know mentioned all the play testing i mean i would say this is something i feel like Looking at it in the limited playtime I've had with it, it feels like something like I could buy off the shelf right now and it's pretty much ready to go. That doesn't mean you're not going to tweak it anymore. I don't know. So, um, folks, so it is, it's uh, Galactic Scoundrels, a game of space western mayhem for three to five players. Uh, and, and it is on Kickstarter right now from Little Rock Games. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get us to a break and, and then... Uh, a couple of other. Oh yeah, and I got to call somebody a liar in game. That was one of the options I had to call somebody a liar, and you know I did it, baby. So um, in game, I was literally one of the options that you can call somebody a liar. How did that pay off for you? Ah, uh, well, you know, not well, <laughs> but but hey, you know, I'm going to invoke the spirit of Harlan Ellison, and I'm going to pick my fights and stick to them. <laughs> So nice. he was a dirty liar. No, he wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't lying. So, okay. Uh, so I'm going to get us a break. When we come back, I, I think that Brad and Robbie are going to pull leather and blast Tanner and Olivia and take their spots. So, uh, Zach, go ahead uh, and get us to a break right here on Shane Plays Geek Talk. Hey, welcome back to Shane Plays Geek Talk. A journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. Thanks so much for joining us. Been talking with the crew of Little Rock Games. Uh, and they're right here, strangely enough, in Little Rock. And they're kickstarting a game called Galactic Scoundrels, a game of space western mayhem for three to five players. And that uses uh, cards and dice, and, and, and it's got all kinds of cool. You can make a narrative game out of it and, and you actually really get into the role of being a a, a scoundrel in space. Think, uh, think Han Solo. Think uh, Malcolm Reynolds from Firefly. It's not that exact thing, but that'll give you kind of a feel. And, and there's a lot of uh, callbacks and, and call-outs to a lot of science fiction and Western elements in this game. Talked a little bit before the break about playing it. 
uh, and, and to make sure that we've got uh, Brad and Robbie have joined us, and Tanner and Olivia have uh, have hit the escape pods to give them room uh, to talk. This is a five-person game development cooperative. Uh, go to the Kickstarter. Uh, I'll have the links on the show notes. Just search for Galactic Scoundrels on Kickstarter. You'll find it. They've got a demo video there. So, uh, you know, go check that out. And then support the game. Uh, if you like what you see, I, I think you will. If you're a tabletop gamer at all, uh, I've already I've already backed it. Uh, you know, thank the, you. Yeah, you're welcome. The uh, the backing levels are very reasonable, and I think now you you did have, but it, I think it's already all gone now. There, y'all had a stretch goal level where somebody could help design a card. We did. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we had a, a level at 75 bucks where you could design one of the special Kickstarter e- exclusive cards. So, oh, wow. Yeah, characters, encounters. That went pretty quick. It went it? in yeah, an hour. Very quick. It, it went gone. super 25 quick. 25 of those. Just <laughs> wow. That just went, I, I, pr- I know somebody that – I won't throw their name out on air because I don't know if they – you know, but they, they told me they did it. So nice. it was the yeah. person that, that even – he said, hey, you should check this out. I was like, what? They're right here in Little Rock? Cool. So, um, all right, so – Joe, I'm going to get to you in here in a second because I asked your other guys, and Ga- or Olivia and Tanner, what 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 do they like about Galactus Scoundrels? Tell us a bit, a bit about it. But we haven't had a chance to talk to Brad or Robbie yet, so I'm just I'm just going to start with Robbie. Uh, Robbie, uh, you know, I, I was asking the folks before the uh, before the break, you know, what what is Little Rock Games to you? What do you like about Little Rock Games? What is, oh, what are you trying to do with it? Goodness, um, you know, you know, I just I really like. Uh, how they motivate me to sort of uh, focus on an idea and maybe workshop it a little bit. Okay. I think the danger of being a creative person um, without a group of people. You get all up in your own silo. <laughs> yes, and exactly. And you perspective on if it's good or not. And so let me let me see if this sounds right, because I, I don't design games, but I've done other stuff. Sometimes you'll think something is absolute poop, and it's actually really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you'll <laughs> think something is the most amazing thing the world's ever seen, and it's actually not that good. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's not good to roll up in your own creative silo sometimes. So, Absolutely. Yeah, all right. So, so that's what you like about it. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. They're okay. really good at, at keeping perspective for Okay, me. so what, what part did you have in designing Galactic Scoundrels? Um, you know, I was just... You- for this game, I was just um, always available for a playtest, and this was a game that required a lot of playtesting. So I think that was uh, probably my main contribution um, for this one. Okay, excellent. Uh, all right, and now that – so Galactic Scoundrels itself, what's, like, something you want to mention about it, like, that, that you think it's either unique or will be appealing to oh, people? It has never not been hilarious. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of games where you sit down and ostensibly they're meant to be hilarious, and they are maybe the first two or three times. Right. Um, but this game uh, has I've never not had a great time, even when I play with strangers, uh, when I play with the same people over and over. Um, That's the second it. time replayability has been has been mentioned. It seems to have a lot it's, of replayability. It's absolutely true. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, Joe. I'm going to get to you here in a second. Got a. Uh, I have a up and coming. I don't know if he's a potential game designer. We're talking to Little Rock Games. They're uh, a game development company right here in Little Rock. They've, they've done Galactic Scoundrels. But uh, I, I was talking James, right? Is it James? I was talking to your dad before the show, and I, I saw you over there having fun. So I just wanted to give you a chance to say hi on the radio. So here's what I'm going to do because I don't have a traditional microphone. I'm going to kind of pull this out and let you talk into it. Okay? So it's a little weird, but it'll work. All right? So, James, tell me, uh, what are you playing today? Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, like a card game? Is it, is, is, have you played it much? No, it's actually my first time. Yeah, what do you think about it? Uh, it's, it's kind of weird to understand, but I'm starting to get the hang of it. Cool, well, most games are like that. So what other games do you like playing? Pokemon, the card game, and that's pretty much it. I just like Pokemon. Find what you like and stick with it. Nothing wrong with it. Do you play Pokemon Go? Does anybody have a device you play Pokemon Go on? Yes, I do. Okay, great. So, uh, do, do y'all come? Yeah. Hearthstone, you play Hearthstone. Do y'all, uh, do y'all come to Game nice. Goblins very often? Uh, since we have, we have, I have to, I, sometimes I babysit it by my sister. I can't really go a lot. Right. But you get here when you can. All right, cool. Well, James, tell everybody hello and goodbye, and thanks for coming on the radio. Thanks for 
uh, letting me come on the radio and bye. All right, go go uh, go unleash some amazing uh, Goku action there. So okay. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm floating that's around awesome. over there. Yeah. Yeah. I love getting kids on the radio, <laughs> man. I, I know that hysterical. Robbie is also a huge Pokemon fan. Uh, are you? So oh, yeah, absolutely. Pokemoners. Yeah. I've played the game since they came out, day one, and I have every single Pokemon. I have a complete Pokedex in every single game. Wow. Yeah. So I did not know that about you, Robbie. Oh, sorry. That's All cool. Right. Well, let me check real quick. Hey, Zach, uh, how much time we got left, buddy? You have eight minutes. You got eight minutes. Okay, I'm, out, I'm not in my studio, so I don't have my normal... We've got uh, some family in the house, Corey Cagle and Christina. What's up, guys? They're going to be playing in my game later. So, okay, uh, Joe, tell us a little bit. I know we got your take kind of on what Little Rock Games is. Uh, what? Tell us what, you know, if you were in an elevator yes. and you had two floors to tell somebody about Galactic Scoundrels, what would you touch on? Yeah, so um, like Olivia – the thing that I love the most about this game is telling my favorite kind of stories. So I love S- Star Wars, Star Trek, you name it, man. And, and I loved those stories when I was eight. I loved them when I took my little Star Wars action figures and f- made them fight it out in the front yard. Oh, yeah. And I still love the it today. The little lightsabers yeah, that went up the arm? Yeah, shoot them out the arm. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. In fact, I should say, go if you go and watch the Kickstarter video, <laughs> you will see a fully animated rendition of my Han Solo figure fighting a gypsy moth caterpillar. In it's 1980 epic. in Connecticut. So, That's fantastic. So, yeah. So, uh, so let me tell you, well, since, as long as I'm talking about Star Wars and Scoundrels, I got to say this. I thought Solo was fine. It was an enjoyable summer movie, right? I, I don't, you know, it wasn't the most amazing movie here. It wasn't terrible. It was good. It was just summer sci-fi entertainment. Right. But it absolutely reestablished without a shadow of a doubt that Han shot first yes <laughs> indubitably and arguably yes. first so i almost felt Thank like heaven yeah i almost felt like the movie was kind of like <laughs> like going out of its way <laughs> that hand shot first yeah. or han shot first yeah, okay absolutely. anyway go ahead no, so, so yeah. i mean so i we i don't i'm older right i've been around a while and i've got kids and i got a life and i don't have six months to put a story together so right. I want a couple of hours with my friends to tell a really fun, ridiculous story about space. And, and we, we wanted that, all of us, and so that's why, why I made this. So collectively, uh, no pun intended, what, like, what, are your, what are your hopes that Galactic Scoundrels will do for you as Inbrat? I'm about to get to you, buddy. Uh, as an as a organization, what are your, uh, do you see that Galactic Scoundrels is the game that's going to kind of put you into a greater arena or like what are your hopes for this game yeah so i mean ideally obviously hope number one is this is a successful kickstarter we've never run one so we wanted to try that out um we wanted to get the feel for how that worked but um you know if it makes a ton of money that would be fantastic but i think all of us are about creating fun experiences for people so if we know that 500 people are going to get a fun experience yeah it would be great if that were 10,000, but if right. it's 500, I feel like job well done. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, fantastic. Uh, all right. And then finally, Brad. Yes. My man. Yes. I accused you of lying. Yes, you did. <laughs> and as Olivia said, how'd that work out for you? Uh, no, again, I was actually kind of hoping you were going to kick the table over. I, th- I was hoping it would be like the, you know, but, uh, but you didn't. I guess that's not in the rules. Uh, but anyway, so. Uh, what is what is Little Rock Games? What does being part of Little Rock Games mean to you? Um, as these guys have said before, it's we're friends. Yeah, uh, and these are the people that that I want to play these games with and make these games with. Um, we sort of sort of coalesced as a group of uh, game designers with with a lot of similar interests. As they mentioned earlier, sort of we like games with a little hint of social responsibility, a little hint also of maybe irreverence. Uh, and 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 being a little tricky. Wait, wait a minute. So, are there in-app purchases in this so that you can rescue a scoundrel? <laughs> That's a higher tier. Oh, okay, but yeah, we're, right. we're, we're you can foster a scoundrel. Yeah, you so. can. Yeah, um, that's great. But but uh, being interested in those kinds of games, being interested really on games that are off the beaten path. One of the things that nobody's mentioned yet, we do a podcast called the Oh yeah, uh, promote game of your the podcast, Club. right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and you can you can find that where on uh, all of your favorite podcast apps. Where you can also get it at LittleRockGames.com. But every and month, is that literal is it, is the name of it? Game of the Month Club. Club? Yeah. Okay, Game all of right. the Month Club. And uh, the the way that it works is every month one of us picks a game, a digital game on Steam. Um, so far, we've only picked game on Steam, games on Steam, but we might branch out. 
Um, we pick a digital game. We all play it for the whole month. We get together at the end of the month, and we uh, just talk about our experience with it. And we invite everybody who listens to it to comment, to uh, give us some feedback about it, and say what they thought of the game, and to really to play along with us throughout the month. Okay. Um, and bringing this back, we so far out of the five games that we've picked, we've always managed to pick really off the beaten path games. We picked everything. We picked uh, Nantucket, um, Diaries of a Spaceport Janitor, the Norwood Suite, and... Near Automata. Near Automata, uh, which wasn't a Steam game. It was a, a console game. Um, but it did come oh, to it, Steam. It is on Steam, too. That's true. That's true. Now, is it... Uh, are you going to keep it exclusively digital games, or will you branch out in anything else? You know, we we like doing the digital because it's an, a relatively easy way for everybody in the world to play along with us. I uh-huh. mean, we could do a thing where we say go out and buy a board game. Um, or print and play. Or yeah. print and play. There, there is something about having Insta- one person yeah. play it at a time and, and give us their yeah. feedback. Yeah. But yeah. I, I think we could totally branch out and say, you know, we, we've yeah. played, uh, b- played this board game or card game. And this is what we thought about it, uh, and, and that might be something we have yeah. in the future. Maybe right. season. We, we typically only play games that are under twenty bucks too. Got, yeah, yeah, so to keep it that. so yeah. right. It That's also cool. gives us a neater range that we go through. Except right, near Automata, which was like seven hundred dollars <laughs> and wow. forty million hours. Wow. <laughs> All right, hold on. What's that? Hey, Zach, what's my time check there, buddy? You got two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, uh, guys. Uh, any, I, I get, got about another minute, and then I've got to wrap us with my own. Uh, pointless annoying stuff here so uh final super quick thought on either little rock games or uh galactic scoundrels go it's free for all nice uh so galactic scoundrels even if you're not a storyteller you can tell great stories with this game yes and they're hilarious stories that your, you and your friends can play over and over if you just like science fiction uh and and that kind of genre a little bit it's it's a great game and thank you guys everybody who's back to the kickstarter so far keep backing all right, Robbie. We are just one of many really creative people here in Little Rock, and um, there's a lot more creative stuff happening here than people think. I yes. dig that. Yeah, yep. I try to, I try to, I try to get that word out there. So, okay, well, guys, thanks for coming on. Remember, it's Little Rock Games, and they're currently kickstarting Galactic Scoundrels, a game of space, space Western mayhem for three to five players, which uses cards and four-sided dice, also known as caltrips uh, and imagination. So, all right, guys, I got to do this. Uh, I always end with a bad joke of the week. Uh, so, you ready? Yes. All right, it's supposed to be bad. Hit me. All right. How come there aren't any knock knock jokes about freedom? How come? Because freedom rings. Ooh. <laughs> there you go. That was that was for Fourth of July well coming done. up. Well Every, done. Thanks so much for coming on, guys. Thank Support you. the Kickstarter out there, listeners. Yes. Galactic Scoundrels, and we'll catch you next time on Shane Plays. Harlan Ellison's watching. Times is tough for writers. You just don't know how it is. In addition to having a steadily more illiterate audience every year, I mean, that is to say, people who don't read books, people who have forgotten the past to the extent that nostalgia becomes what they had for breakfast, we have this thing called political correctness. Now, in the world of science fiction, writers have to pay attention to what's going on around them because science fiction is the only 100% hopeful fiction. That is to say, inherent in the form is, there will be a tomorrow. If you read a science fiction story, it says, this will happen tomorrow. Now, that's, that's very positive. It's very pragmatic. We'll be here tomorrow. We may be unhappy. We may be all living like maggots, but we'll be here. So that means it's 100% positive. Artistic freedom, thus, becomes something that might be a little troublesome because we deal in allegory, because we deal in the ideas that are not exactly what they are today, but they seem to be about something that we know today, and yet they're tomorrow's idea. The Jesse Helmses of the world, the Phyllis Schlafly's of the world, the Pat Buchanan's of the world, the skinheads of the world find science fiction very, very, very troubling. And they want you to be politically correct. That is to say, You are not allowed to insult anyone. You can't have a character who's an unpleasant woman. You can't have an unpleasant person who has a deformity. Everybody has to be terrific. Let me tell you a story. This truly happened. A few years ago, I got a letter. I get a lot of mail. As As a writer of Matters Fantastic and as a critic of the field, I get a lot of mail. And they're filled with opinions. Everybody has opinions. I have them. You have them. And we are all told from the moment we open our eyes that everyone is entitled to his or her opinion. Well, that's horse pucky, of course. 
We are not entitled to our opinions. We are entitled to our informed opinions. Without research, without background, without understanding, it's nothing. It's just bibble babble. It's like a fart in a wind tunnel, folks. So I get opinions. And I get a letter one day from a guy, we'll call him Mr. Johnson. And Mr. Johnson says, you are always writing stories in which midgets are villains. Now, footnote here. When you get one of these letters, they don't always, they don't say something rational like, in this story you did it, or that story you did it. It's always, you always did it. So I went back through 1,100 published stories. I found two stories with midgets in them. One of them was the, was the hero. So this guy writes me and he says, I am three foot tall, and we don't like being called midgets. We like being called little people. Well, I thought about this letter for a while, this political correctness being a, a problem, and I, and I really am concerned about it, and I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I thought about it. And finally, I wrote him back a letter, and I said, Dear Mr. Johnson, I am five foot five. I'm a little person. You're a midget. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays.